the law, the social media bill as it currently stands, will not meet even the basic minimum standards of legality. We've raised the issue of fake news and the fact that disinformation and propaganda is raising a lot of concerns in our country today. In 2017, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Promotion and Protection of the Rights of Freedom of Opinion and Expression, jointly with the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, gave a declaration on freedom of expression and how to tackle fake news and disinformation. They clearly stated that the general prohibitions on the dissemination of information based on vague and ambiguous ideas including false news or non-objective information are incompatible with human rights law and should be abolished. It was also stressed that the human right to impart information and ideas is not limited to correct statements in protocol. My name is Osai Ujigo. I'm the country director of Amnesty International Nigeria. Amnesty International considers this social media bill a threat to freedom of expression in Nigeria. As we already have submitted our memo, I would just lay emphasis on certain aspects of our recommendations. We want to state categorically that Nigeria, being a member of the International Committee of Nations, has ratified several instruments, particularly the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and is also a member of the African Union, and the Article 9 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, which Nigeria has also passed as part of its laws, is also binding on Nigeria. This bill, by its content, seeks to prohibit false statements of facts that are likely to be prejudicial to the public health, public safety, tranquility, and influence the outcome of Basically, Mr. Chairman, this bill seeks to infringe on human rights, and it's the position of the Policy and Legal Advocacy Center that this committee, the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, should entirely discountenance the bill. It is not salvageable, so any talk about amending the provisions of the bill to accommodate the presentations made here today, Mr. Chairman, is certainly not the view of a lot of us who are in this room, and indeed, a lot of Nigerians. With laws even existing right now, a lot of us who experience security agencies on the streets, on the road, know the inconveniences, the massive violations of human rights that citizens suffer when policemen, security agencies, stop citizens on the street. To achieve those gains that the inventors have really created, they created these platforms for ease of communication, for ease of interaction, it has a lot of positivities. A lot of young men have gotten married through social network. That's a very good positive. I mean, it's a, it's a positive. It's a very good example. And this is one of the most reasons why a lot of people thought when they deny them the use of social media, there will be no friendship again. No. It's a fact. You can't deny it. A lot of people have gotten married through social network. You can't deny it. Internet and social media usage in Nigeria, if you look at the statistics today, in this country, there was a time the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria was sick and dying. And we broke the news that he was terminally ill. He was described as false. If this bill had passed at that time, I would be sitting in jail until that president would have died because for five months, the man was brain dead. But nobody had the ability and the capacity to report it because it was described as false news. And that tells you that this bill is not about the protection of Nigerians, but the protector of those in power. It's as simple as ABC. Mr. Senator, I am unhappy that the senator who proposed this bill is not here while I'm speaking. I do not wish to insult him, but the man doesn't know how the internet works. Otherwise, he would have understood that if you have a VPN, something called VPN, 
You can mask your identity and say whatever you want to say, and nobody will find out where you are. But it's because this bill was plagiarized from Singapore, which she never denies, brought to Nigeria. In Singapore, things are working. You cannot bring something that is working from somewhere to a place where things are not working. Let me tell you, if there is any public parliament today that is regulating even the functions of this parliament, it's our people on the internet. And this bill is, a, is aimed at shutting them down. Number three, sir, it is that government, by sir, the Nigerian government, is the biggest purveyor of false news. It is categorically false for government to be telling us that the economy is, is working when the economy is not working. Is that not false? No, no. Mr. Senator, let me finish. I have my last point. I have my last point. Uh, Mr. Don't be afraid. You've been there before as a NAS president. You know. But finally, finally, Mr. Uh, Honorable Senator, uh, let me say. I was told that I still have two minutes anyway. Um, my final point, which will not last up to a minute, is that in conversing for the death of this bill, don't let us make the fundamental mistake of pointing government in the direction of other draconian laws that are outdated in our books. It is important for everybody to know that the Nigerian constitution itself is outdated. It wasn't made by the Nigerian people. It wasn't made for the Nigerian people. We should be talking about how to fix our constitution through a referendum. Because if we had a constitution that is made for the people and by the people, there is no way, like the South Africans have after apartheid, that we will have a bill like this standing at the people's building here in Abuja. It would never have been considered. And it would mean that some of the people who had this kind of outdated ideas would never have made it to even our Senate. That is the truth. The final thing I want to say is that this bill is dead. We are here to bury it. Thank you very much.